last fall at the military show at the fairgrounds, the building was suddenly filled with the sound of taps. Crisp, clear, cool, haunting. We had to find the person behind that horn and bring him to this meeting so that you could all hear. Well, we found and he's sitting right here, and he's going to give us a presentation. Let's hear it from William Crowder. He's here with us. I don't know if you need this, but if you do, it's right here.
There are also uh, 20 to 30 artillery columns, as well as cavalry columns. This is all Civil War. Now, uh, you'll notice they have different colored bugle cards. Red for artillery, blue for infantry, and yellow or gold for cavalry. Now, one thing you know, uh, we all had to learn our languages by first knowing an alphabet. I have an alphabet. C, G, C, E, G. <coughs> That's my alphabet. I'm going to speak to you in three languages. <coughs> Artillery, cavalry, and infantry. I'll just give you an example of a call in each language. Now, this, this is just, it probably never happened, but uh, it's going to happen here. <laughs> uh, imagine a battlefield that's very noisy. You've got artillery and uh, the cavalry are shooting their carbines and there's a lot of racket going on. Uh, uh, 58 caliber muskets are cracking. And uh, my colonel comes up to me and he says, when you call a ceasefire, we'll quiet things down. So I'm going to use three ceasefires. Ceasefire infantry is four sets of knees. Artillery. Cavalry. So now the battlefield is quiet. So that's just a hypothetical thing. Now, uh, I mentioned that there are 49 infantry calls. I'm going to just run through a day in camp, just a camp time scenario. Uh, the first 26 of my 49 Google calls, I act as a camp clock. Reveille, you all know Reveille. Uh, duty calls throughout the day, uh, drill call, a number of calls such as that, uh, followed up by, uh, at the end of the day, but prior to 1862, I would have sounded extinguished lights, which was one of uh, Napoleon's favorite Google calls. Many of our uh, Maneuvering tactics, as well as bugle calls, came from the French. They were a powerful military power. Uh, so what, uh, what I would do is uh, run through this scenario of uh, camp clock scenario. The first one, the first call I'm going to do is reveille, which comes from the French word revier. So this is reveille. Castles. 
uh, very uh, flowery and water, and, and it was uh, a real harsh cracker. So the soldier would make their coffee and dip their their uh, heart cack in the coffee, and the worms would float to the top, or whatever kind of critter might be stored in the holes. They had 60 holes in the heart cack. And so they float to the top, and you have the option of skimming the protein off or ingesting it. So most of the soldiers skimmed the bugs off. But uh, this is still a little aside. Than that. So now we're having our breakfast. And at the previous day's roll call, Company A and Company B were assigned specific duties. Company A is going to go out and drill. We're going to drill and drill and drill some more. Uh, the Napoleonic maneuvering tactics that were used took a long time to learn. If you had a thousand men in a regiment marching side by side, it took up a lot of real estate. And you, to maneuver them efficiently on the field, you had to know how to do it. So they would drill. Using, this is the call that would summon Company A to uh, the drill field. And uh, they need more 
uh, wood. They need more water for the evening. Uh, so Company B has to go out and they have to bolster up the breastworks because tomorrow there's going to be a battle. So they're out in the field for hours and hours. The shadows are getting long and it's time for them to get back to camp. And I'm going to use a call, uh, it's called a tattoo. And it's not what you would put on your arm. Uh, like a lot of the kids I see with tattoos now. But the tattoo is a type of bugle call. I'm going to bring people back with the evening tattoo. And this is another one borrowed from the French. Kind of a pretty one. That's my story is Jerry 
I don't want to leave this story. So now we've finished our day in camp, and what I want to do now is uh, get into the maneuvering call. So a little fast forward to tomorrow, and we're going to have a battle. And we're getting all our troops lined up. First, I'm going to get the attention. The attention was sounded. All of our, all our muskets are, uh, we're making our, our muskets are in a teepee, basically, with the bayonets. They're stacked, stacked arms. And so uh, when I sound the attention, we all grab our muskets and get ready for battle. <laughs> Something that helps me and has helped other viewers is we use ditties, little sayings, so that we can remember the calls. The viewer wasn't necessarily the brightest candle in the candelabra, so we had to have a little crutch. My crutch is uh, these little sayings. So now we're all lined up, we've retrieved our muskets, we're going to march on, out onto the field. I'm going to go forward march, halt, and then either right wheel or left wheel. Forward march is swing your legs, swing your legs, swing your little legs, you swing your legs, swing your legs, swing your little legs. You do it twice. The last note, second time through, the thousand men step off with their left foot, march across the field. Conversely, if I'm going to stop them, stop your feet, stop your feet, pop, 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 pop. Now the next part is a little trickier, and you're going to have to be attentive, attentive on this one because you will be tested. Uh, this is going to be a wheeling motion. The ditty is, a wheel, a wheel, here we go, merry go round, my thumb pivot point, a right turn after I do the ditty, ba 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 right turn, ascending notes, left turn, do the ditty, descending note, ba 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 and it's done twice that after the ditty, because the first ba 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 that is uh, indicating the direction, the next time through it tells you to execute the maneuver. Well, like I say, you've got a thousand men and it's very ponderous moving and they don't always hear, so you've got to repeat. So I'm going to go forward, march, halt, and then I'm going to wheel you, and having listened carefully, you will tell me the direction. Okay? Okay, here we go. <laughs> spot for us to have enough room to maneuver, so he stops us. Stop your feet, stop your feet, now we're going to wheel. Direction please. Very good, very good. Okay, now we're in position to uh, charge the enemy. We're going to charge them at the point of the bayonet. And the infantry charge that is used is, of course, no longer used, but uh, this was sounded at first full run by General Daniel Butterfield again. Uh, a bugler, uh, you might have two, bugler, two buglers per company of 100 men, but officers were also required to know the call, recognize the call, and sound that call when necessary. So uh, Butterfield grabbed the bugler from his uh, brigade bugler and to inspire his men, uh, sounded this charge. using uh, the parlay 
or the church call. Maybe. This call has three three reasons for it. Like I say, if you uh, were in camp and you're required to go to church, that was one use. Now we're going to use it for clearing that it moved. The third use, which I really don't understand, it will okay. match up with the other two is knapsack inspection. Now, a soldier might secrete a little flask of demon rum or some playing cards or dice, which was forbidden. So the, the colonel would investigate that matter. But now we're going to use this for retrieving our dead and wounded. The calls that I'm sounding were used by both Confederates and Federals, which caused a great deal of confusion also. Confusion, I should say. And uh, this is the, this is the uh, parlay.
Now, I think, uh, let's see. I'm giving you a lot of stuff about forward march, but uh, we also would retreat on okay. uh, Retreat while firing is an important one. Fight your way back, fight your way back. Don't turn your backs, boys, but fight your way back. Thank <laughs> you. 
I actually got thrown out of the state capitol. Uh, yeah, this was an interesting story. In 2004, uh, I worked for Metro Transit. I drove the city bus for 43 years. We had a, a strike, and uh, I brought my horn to the Capitol steps when we had a rally, and the speakers were talking about ending the strike and whatnot. I play a few charges and rally the troops, so to speak. So a bunch of us said, well, let's, six or eight of us went into the Capitol, and said, let's, let's go up and talk to Lenny and I end this mess that we're in. It's a 44 day strike, and it was horrible, inconveniencing a lot of people, including myself. Uh, so we went in, and I had my horn with me, and uh, we get right underneath the big dome. So, <laughs> the guys nudges me. He said, hey, I'll play something. The acoustics were great. I got to the last note of my bugle call, and I was escorted off by a security guard. But it was worth it. So you got their attention, in other words. <laughs> hey, sorry. Where are the Civil War soldiers paid? Oh, yeah. Yeah. $13 a month if you were white. You were black, you got $10. Uh, I'm a bugler for Company F, 29th Infantry, the United States Colored Troops out of Milwaukee. Uh, they had white officers as well as they did have white bugler for a period of time. So I go out there once a year and participate with them. I'm one of the three white guys in that group. But uh, they, for a long time, they refused their pay because they weren't getting equal pay to white soldiers. Finally, you know, so we can make sure they have exact group. And uh, musicians got a little bit more, um, of course. <laughs> Sir? Was there much confusion between the opposing army and bugle calls like the North and the South and the Japanese and the Americans? Well, I, I don't know about Japanese and Americans, but I can tell you the, the Civil War did. They used the same bugle calls from the same manuals. And uh, there was, yeah, yeah, if I were to play to the color, that would be a rallying call to form the battle lines. Well, as a bugler who did that, it's one important battle uh, for the Union side. And the reps skedaddled. They took off because they thought, oh my god, they have more men, they're going to form another line. We're done. So they took off. So uh, this bugler uh, got the Congressional Medal of Honor for doing that and saving lives. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the lips. <laughs> yes. Well, this is a. Uh, oh. I'm trying to think about it. This type of canteen was flat, so that you could lay it down like in a, in a low quantity of water, a puddle or something. And uh, this holds about a quart, believe it or not. Uh, this one's stainless steel. They did not have stainless steel for canteens back then. They were tin. And they had bullseye canteens. Uh, this one does not have that configuration on it. It's circle, circle, circle. And you can see it through the cover. Uh, but bullseye canteens are sought after if you get an original one. I'd like to get an original Civil War bugle, but there's so many reproductions and chasters out there, I'd be afraid to buy one unless I could really get uh, you know, authenticated. Sir? When the bugler wasn't bugle, what, was, what, what else did they do? Well, <laughs> cleared the field with great movement. Musicians would do that. Uh, we would have two buglers per company of them. Uh, so, the viewer couldn't be going 24 7, so they would alternate, you know, 12 to 12. You know, like, uh, Corporal of the Guard would wake the bugler up, because they had 24 hour guards, wake the bugler up and find the do the rebel or other calls. Anyone else? Sir? Just for the, <clears throat> for the record, today I, I can speak for the Army. Uh, as recently as last week at Fort Hood and Fort Sill, all the daily bugle calls are still done. Chow, adjutants called, really? and everything. Uh, and the, the Air Force and the Marine Corps, I know, do rebel uh, retreat, caps and such, but uh, speaking for the Army, why mm -hmm. they do all the daily bugle calls. Do they do, they do a drill call and that type of thing? Well, you don't go to drill, you go to work. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but yeah, they, they, they do the, the, the standard calls. Mm -hmm. they're, they're done. And that, that's the beauty of being on a military installation. All of a sudden, boy, there's a call you don't even recognize, and I wonder what it's for, you know. And uh, it's nice. Over the loudspeakers, heard on every corner of the installations. Wow. Are they done live or by recording? No, it's, 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 it's a recording that's done. It's not live. 
Uh, there's a group called Buglers Across America that's devoted to the live sounding of taps. I'm a member of that. I, I, it really upsets me to uh, have a recording being played or sounded over a veteran who is being buried. That's just wrong. Uh, I, I, it's just wrong. I, myself, I, I would rather have a bugler sound taps live, even if he makes a mistake, because that's the least you can do for someone to serve their country. Sir? Does playing the bugle improve your lips enough that the girls like it that much? All the ladies love to kiss the bugler. <laughs> <laughs> My wife hates it when I do that. I, I do a lot of school presentations, uh, fifth and sixth graders, uh, Eagle Point School, Oak Hill School, a number of other ones, and uh, I'll do that. And uh, one school, I was three for five. I'm not doing that. <laughs> do you do echo taps? Yes, yes, yes. I I, uh, I got to play echo taps for the Saint Fallen Saint Paul Firefighters, Minnesota Fallen Firefighters. There were 208 people who uh, actually the story behind that is I belong to Saint Paul Police Band. I play trombone for them. Our tuba player is the fire marshal for Saint Paul, Steve Zakar, and he knew I played bugle so. For the last three years, I've been the echo and echo taps for the Fallen Firefighters Memorial Celebration. Two buglers, or do you do both types? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but the lead bugler was sound taps, and the, I was being the echo, I'd be off maybe 50 yards. And then I'd do the bomb, 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 he holds it. Bom, bom, bom. But what was really neat about this one was at the conclusion of the ceremony, they released a covey of white doves. The white doves are flying up, and that's the signal for the lead bugler to start sounding taps, and I do the, do the echo. And uh, what an emotional thing. It's just incredible. I, I, I've played at a, a, a couple of uh, national cemeteries, Wood National Cemetery in Milwaukee. There's 37,000 buried there, and uh, the first time I did that, I, you've heard of vibrato? You know, the vibrato wavering of your tone, you make it that way purposely. Well, I did it because I was doing this, you know, looking at 37,000 uh, headstones at, at, at twilight. Uh, oof, dawn to dusk. It was an incredible thing. You know, I'm glad I was able to do it. It was an honor to be able to sound taps, but I do not like the reason I sound it. I mean, it's good to see someone gone. But out of respect to those who have fallen, we certainly want to uh, have live taps. So I've been able to, like I say, do that several times for the St. Paul Fire Department and the State of Minnesota Fallen Firefighters Association. So, Echo Taps is nice. I like it. But, uh, are you going to play Taps for us? Would you like that? Yes. 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 That doesn't mean we're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember what I called it? What? Well, Taps, 24 notes and taps. Butterfield Bullet Yeah, okay. So if you can hear it, you can tell people what the Butterfield Bullet Eye is.